Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a banned Giruda deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring a couple new cards from Strixhaven, including Bookworm, the 8 mana 7-7 seven, seven worm with Trample, so that when it enters a battlefield we gain 3 life and we get to draw a card, and for 2 and a green we can put Bookworm from our graveyard into our library, third from the top. So what is this deck all about? Well, we're playing a Giruda Doom of Depths deck, the 6 mana 6-6 six, six legendary demon Kraken has a companion requirement, making us start our deck with only evenly costed cards. So if we take a look at our curve, we have a lot of 2 drops, 4 drops, 6 drops, and now even an 8 drop thanks to Bookworm. So that's the requirement, and then we get a creature that when it enters a battlefield, each player mills 4 cards, and then we can put a creature card with an even mana value from among the milled cards onto the battlefield under our control. So Giruda can potentially find a Bookworm and put it in play for free, and there's other very powerful creatures we can find as well. So let's take a look at the rest of our deck, starting out with our 2 drops, where we have some early ramp with Wolf Willow Haven and with Lotus Cobra, as well as 4 copies of Charming Prince, the 2-2 two -two creature that when it enters a battlefield we either scry 2, gain 3 life, or we can exile another target creature we own and return it to the battlefield under our control at the beginning of the next end step. So Charming Prince can essentially flicker one of our creatures, re-enabling an enter the battlefield ability, so it's also a nice creature to find with Giruda, because then we can exile Giruda and get the enter the battlefield trigger once again to hopefully find some more creatures to put into play. Then at 4 mana we've got the full playset of Thassa, Deep Dwelling, which is doing something very similar to Charming Prince, except it can do it every turn at the beginning of our end step, exile up to one of our other creatures and then return it to the battlefield under our control right away. And then it's also a 6-5 legendary enchantment creature god that's indestructible, but it only turns into a creature if our devotion to blue is at least 5. So Thassa adds 1 to our devotion, Giruda adds 2 to our devotion, so if we find any other creature with at least 2 devotion, we can turn on Thassa which is not too difficult, with cards like Quandrix Cultivator, Dream Trawler, that can all enable Thassa for us. And then we also have an activated ability for 3 and a blue to tap another target creature, which can also come up in the late game once we have access to a ton of mana. Then we also have the full playset of Quandrix Cultivator as more ramp, can potentially play it on turn 3 after playing Lotus Cobra or Haven to set up an early Giruda, a 3-4 creature that when it enters a battlefield we can search our library for a basic forest or island card and put it on the battlefield untapped, so a great way to ramp and another nice target to flicker with Thassa. And then we also have the full playset of Verdant Mastery. So this one we can cast for 3 and a green instead of 5 and a green, in which case we get to search for 4 basic lands, the opponent gets one of them of our choice, we get to put 2 of them in play, and we get a 4th one in our hand. So it's not a bad deal for 4 mana, even though it also ramps the opponent, it makes it easier to hit our land drops, since we don't always have a ton of lands in hand. And if we cast it for the full price instead, we get to put 2 lands in play and 2 in our hand, so the opponent doesn't get anything, but still a totally fine card to cast for 4 mana, especially if we can play it early with a Lotus Cobra or Haven. And then at 6 mana we get some of our heavy hitters. Of course we've got 3 remaining copies of Giruda in the main deck, so we don't always have to pay the 3 mana to put Giruda into our hand, so we can potentially go turn 2 ramp card, turn 3 ramp card, into a turn 4 Giruda, which is a dream. And then we also have 3 copies of a Dream Trawler, the 3-5 Sphinx with Flying and Life Link gets plus 1 plus 0 whenever we draw a card, and when the Sphinx attacks we get to draw a card as well, and we can discard a card to give the Dream Trawler Hexproof until end of turn and tap it, so it's got a bit of built in protection and then two copies of Kogla, the Titan Ape, as a bit of removal for the deck, a 7-6 legendary creature that when it enters a battlefield it fights up to one target creature we don't control, and whenever Kogla attacks we can also destroy an artifact or enchantment defending player controls, and for one on a green we can return a target human we control to its owner's hand to make Kogla indestructible until end of turn, which is also very nice alongside our Charming Prince, since we can potentially play Kogla, and if we have two mana remaining we can even make Kogla indestructible in response to the fight, so we can take on some large creatures and still survive, and then replaying our Charming Prince is usually good value as we can flicker one of our creatures, maybe even exile Kogla so we can find a second creature, so those all work nicely together, and then topping off our curve, three copies of Bookworm as we've already seen, and then the mana base has to include a few basic lands to go with our Verdant Mastery and Quandrix Cultivator, so we've got two plains, four islands and three forests, and then all 12 pathways in the band colors, 
as well as four copies of Indatha Trium, which is essentially a green-white dual land for most intents and purposes. can also be cycled for three mana if we're flooding out a bit. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. Turn to probably play Cobra. Facing a Lurus of the Dream Den deck that starts with a Swamp. Yeah, could also be convinced to play Haven first, although we don't have any 4-drop to ramp into at the moment. So even if they kill Cobra, it's not a disaster. And it's going to be a Blood Sky Berserker and a Dream Trawler, so I can play land. And then play Haven and still put my Jeruda in hand. And then probably don't want to attack, even though I suspect my Cobra is not long for this world. If Cobra survives, then we get to play Jeruda next turn. If not, we'll have to play Prince to scry towards a 6 land. Humiliates. Alright, that's pretty effective at taking Jeruda, but double Dream Trawler. Still waiting to be cast here. Our opponent takes Charming Prince, so maybe they do have removal for Cobra. Right. Just a Malachi Rebirth to pump Berserker. So yeah, we'll play Jeruda. And we just found another Cobra. Clarion Spirit into Eye Twitch. Berserker now is 6 6 menace. I could double block. Might be worth it. Since we don't have a flicker effect for Geruda anyway. And now we can take over with our Sphinx. Good to keep some lands in hand to potentially discard to save Dream Trawler. Call of the Death Dweller to get back. Presumably a Death Touch Eye Twitch. So that can block our Dream Trawler. And a Selfless Savior to make it indestructible, so that essentially answers two of our Dream Trawlers. Verdant Mastery. Alright, so... If I hardcast Verdant Mastery and play land, we can still play our Sphinx. Might as well thin out the deck a bit. So don't have any good attacks with Dream Trawler at the moment. But it's just a matter of time until we find like a Thassa to tamp down the Eye Twitch. Opponent puts Lurus in hand, so that's eventually gonna be a problem too. Alright, just a lanes. So Go ahead and make a wolf token. And we'll pass a turn. Put in place Lurus, nothing to get back. And a 1-1 one -one Eye Twitch attacks. So opponent just wants to learn and replay it. I can gain 6 for free. 
And there's no lesson that's too bank breaking here. So I think that's fine. And gets necrotic fumes. Alright, Charming Prince can scry. And Kogla seems decent. Especially if Charming Prince stays in play. So we'll pass. Fumes targets Dream Trawler. We'll protect it. And so next turn the plan is to play Kogla. And in response to the fight we can consider picking up Charming Prince. Opponent does have Selfless Savior. But by picking up Charming Prince we can flicker Kogla to find a second time. So 7-7 seven, seven Menace Berserker attacks. Probably just take it for now. All right. So let's play Kogla. And then I guess I'm a little bit short on green mana now that I picked up Haven. But that's okay. We'll just play the pathway then. And now, I think we fight the Selfless Savior, see what the opponent protects. And then we can either flicker Kogla to fight Eye Twitch or Lurus. Or I can fight Eye Twitch to begin with. If they make it indestructible, we kill Lurus. That's probably better because then I at least get to attack with my Dream Trawlers. And in response, pick up Charming Prince. So if our opponent wants to keep Lurus, they won't be able to protect the Eye They do. So now, fight happens. Kogla's indestructible. Play Charming Prince, which will flicker Kogla to kill Lurus. Hopefully that keeps Selfless Savior in the graveyard. And we can keep picking up Kogla with Charming Prince and yeah, opponent packs it in. This is a pretty back-breaking combo. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Lots of cheap ramp. And we can always put Giruda in hand if we don't draw any bombs. Ideally, just Cobra into Cultivator here. And then Cultivator putting a land in play lets me play a second Cobra. Akum Hellhounds off a red white dual land. Alright, let's see if the Cobra survives. Pack Leader, so Dark Tribal will take three. We'll get an island and make green. Play another Cobra. And I'll offer the trade for Pack Leader. Pwn probably takes it. Apparition can exile Cultivator. So, yeah, don't have any good blocks. Take five. Another Cultivator, so if I play a land, we have access to 7 mana. So I can still, you know, play Cultivator and put Giruda in hand. 
or I can even go Cultivator Thassa to Flicker Cultivator and make a lot of mana, so we have a few options. Don't quite have enough for both. So, yeah, I guess we go for Thassa. And then I'm okay offering the trade for Apparition. I could temporarily tap something down, but our opponent's just going to get to untap right away, so doesn't really help. So we'll pass. Can only put Giruda in hand as a sorcery. Bolt Hounds. Alright, that's a lot of damage. So most we can prevent is 3 damage. Take 7. So Giruda needs to save us here. This will also animate Thassa. And we hit a Dream Trawler, not bad. And then now, probably want to play defense. Get to Flicker Giroud out of turn, find another powerful card, hopefully. And yeah, put on packs it in, manage to stabilize just in time onto the next one. All right, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Cobra and Haven giving us a bit of a redundant ramp. Question is which to play first. Kinda depends on the matchup if we suspect Cobra to get killed right away. And now that we drew Cultivator, it is tempting to Cobra, because then next turn I can go Cultivator plus Haven. Alright, we'll try it. So this has to be green. Fable Passage, and Cobra lives. And then we can grab an island, make green mana with Cobra. To still play Wolf Willow Haven. It's a very nice rampy start. Although we are currently out of lands in hand, so we won't be able to trigger landfall to fix our mana for Dream Trawler. It's going to be Haven from our opponent and Draneth Magistrate. Your opponents can't cast spells from anywhere other than their hands, so this used to be good against companions, but now that the companions go to hand, it doesn't really help anymore. So let's see. Yeah, if we put Giruda in hand, we'll have four mana left, so we'll probably just play a Dream Trawler here. And hit for three. So this might be the annoying amps on deck. In which case we can expect something like Binding, Redan, or maybe the Archon. It's gonna be Binding. Probably takes out Cobra here. Oh, goes for Cultivator. Fair enough. I would have liked to flicker Cultivator with Charming Prince. But that's fine. All right, can I play my bookworm here? Let's see, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I can. Play that main phase to pump Dream Trawler. And 
and then get to draw an extra card here. There's no sweepers in the original version of Annoying Amsan, but our opponent could have made some changes. And there's Kaya. Pretty good answer for Bookworm, as that'll be exiled forever. But Green Trawler can finish off Kaya. Kogla also great. So let's see here. Yeah, our opponent has seen enough. We could put Giroud in hand and cast it, which also gets around Magistrate and. Once Kaya's gone, there's not many threats left. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand's a little slow without a two mana ramp card, but I think we still keep. Charming Prince can scry. Facing turn one wind robber, so a mill or a rogue deck here. Scrying against a mill deck, not super useful. Although the life gain also doesn't really matter. I guess we'll scry anyway. And then put cards on top we don't actively want to draw. Giruda I don't really want to draw since milling myself with Giruda's trigger is actually a downside. Uh, and then islands I don't particularly care for but maybe keep those in the deck. So we get to mill Giruda. And uh, yeah, sadly can't do anything but put Giruda in hand. Or we could play another Charming Prince. Could also put the Bookworm back into my deck as an anti-mill measure, although it's a pretty weak one. Let's see, next one we're playing Cultivator. Yeah, I guess maybe we'll end up casting Giruda anyway here. Even though there is a drawback in this matchup. Into the story to draw four. At least there wasn't a tutelage in play. Grab a second island before they're all gone out of my library. Alright, so if we draw land we can cast Giruda. All the opponent might be sitting on some counter spells now. Double Rune Crab is our fabled passage. Just an island, still mills us for six. So we're down to about half our library. And a Secret Keeper mills for four more. And our opponent passes with two mana up. Sadly, no six land for Giruda. So, play Cultivator plus another Charming Prince here. Seems fine, can attack first. Opponent's gonna jump and sag the wind robber. One basic land left. So no real point in flickering cultivator. So, I guess we'll scry. And then Kogli actively want to draw. Although I guess we don't have triple green. Planes would be a fine draw as well. I don't know, I think we bought them both. Frantic inventory draws one. 
So 25 cars remain. And there's a tutelage at long last. Kogala would be a way to destroy it, but that's probably not gonna happen. Shiruda and Dream Troll are gone. Well, we probably have to cast Jiruda, but milling myself for four is helping the opponent. Opponent hasn't played land yet. So we're down to 15 cards, 14 now. Well, we could spend some time putting bookworms back into our deck to prevent decking. Although we could still do that kind of in our upkeep of the turn where we would get milled. So probably no need to do it now. So yeah, I think we just send with the team. Could also consider playing Thassa as a way to tap down blockers and it's gonna be a 6-5 indestructible here. Or we could play Giruda. We'll start by attacking. Yeah, putting Bookworms back into our library when we have zero cards left is going to be pretty key here. So I think I'm okay playing Jiruda. Might as well play this first. Play around Jory Disruption. Now, Dream Trawler is a little dangerous because it draws whenever we attack. So we won't be able to attack with it on an empty library. So do I prefer Lotus Cobra as a question? Yeah, maybe I do. Since a 3-5 that can't attack isn't super helpful. I'm assuming our opponent can get us to zero cards. So upkeep, we have to put a Bookworm back. And third from the top in an empty library is just top card, of course. So Bookworm is back. And we get a few more attempts at this. So attack with everyone. Opponents can chump, chump, take nine. All right, right now they're taking 10. They might have a bounce spell. Unsummon on Cultivator. And we're gonna upkeep, put the Bookworm back so we can replay Cultivator just fine. Also reasonable to play Thassa, just so we have a way to tap down some blockers. But yeah, we essentially get two more turns thanks to these bookworms. If the opponent has a way to draw cards at instant speed to mill us after we put bookworm back, I guess things get more complicated, but we can do this twice. Dismissal bounces Cultivator. All right, we'll see opponent probably wasn't uh, considering the bookworm plan here, so maybe they'll adjust to try and beat it. If they had a way to make us draw cards, they could win here, but... It's gonna be Windrobber. So Windrobber can draw and trigger two Lich, and if they have another Instant speed card draw spell, they can potentially get us here. So we'll see. I want to draw. Opponent's going to sack Windrobber to mill us. That happens. And then afterwards, we want to put Bookworm back. So if they have another instant speed card draw spell, we die. If we had more mana, I guess we could have done this again, but 
we ran out here. Do we get to draw now? Or did they find the frantic inventory? Alright, there we go, GG's. Close game. Bookworm almost managed to defeat the mill deck. I guess we just needed a little bit more mana. Definitely cool to see these new interactions. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. Haven into Cultivator. It's going to make it difficult for the opponent to interact with our ramp. And then we are going to try to cast a Dream Trawler, although we do need a second white source still. Cultivator can get double blue, so double white is the only thing left to accomplish. Opponent a red-white deck with Usher and a Verdant Mastery. Alright, that fixes my mana issues. So if I Mastery next turn we can Dream Trawler guaranteed. Seems worth it. So I want to give the opponent green mana and then we want blue and white for the most part. So, opponent gets green, and we'll get blue and white. Just don't want to give them the white mana, which they can actually put to good use. So let's see what the opponent does with the extra land. Could maybe cast a Winota already. Just an Usher attacking. And a Venerable Warsinger, that's fine. We naturally drew a Giruda. What's better here? Kind of still like Dream Trawler, but it's a close call. This just uh, starts gaining life against an aggressive deck. Although, of course, Giruda has the opportunity to maybe find a Bookworm, which would stabilize us nicely, even if they play something like Blade Historian, which they couldn't cast yet with a Forest. One is still attacking. So if they have a Rimrock Knight on Usher, we can still block, but blocking Warsinger would be a little sketchier. What else could they have here? Like Rimrock Knight plus Stomp, but then we just discard. So there's not too many tricks that I'm expecting. And our opponent concedes, so I guess we made the right block. They were maybe expecting us to block Warsinger or just take it. But yeah, we were in pretty good shape here. So even though Mastery ramped the opponent, it just gave us such a nice mana boost, even fixed our mana for Dream Trawler. And we were easily going to be able to take over with all these other cards in hand. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a somewhat slow hand with no 2 mana accelerant. On the draw, that might be a little bit too slow. Alright, this is better. Get rid of a Thassa and then hope to draw an extra land or two. Snow-covered forests, that's fine. So if we suspect removal, we'll play Haven. Conclave Mentor, so... Worst case scenario, Blizzard Brawl kills Cobra. But that does prevent them from casting a 3-drop and they would need another snow land to not trade. So I feel like Cobra is a pretty low risk play. Although Haven would be a guaranteed cultivator next turn. So there's definitely upsides to both here. So I'll go for the Cobra. That way cultivator finding a land lets me play Haven with landfall. Alright, let's see if there's a Blizzard Brawl. If there is, we could still go Haven into Prince next turn. Opponent offers a trade. As valuable as Conclave Mentor is, I think I need my Cobra more. And then this could be a white source. We'll get an island. And then make green with Cobra. Could also white for Charming Prince here. And then Flicker Cultivator, which I don't hate.
Although we won't be able to play a Haven afterwards. Alright, so land lets us cast Jiruda. If not, we'll go Haven into Thassa, which can flicker Cultivator again. So Basri's Lieutenant puts counter on itself. Could double block Scourge. So our opponents considering not attacking. Alright, no land, but we can still go with the Haven Thassa plan. Flicker Cultivator. Alright, so next turn we can finally play Jiruda. And Thassa, pretty important to deal with these large plus one counter decks since their creatures will eventually be larger than ours. But Thassa can keep them in check, and especially if we have an indestructible blocker. It's going to be able to play defense nicely. Blessing of Frost, also a nice addition with the snow mana here. And it's a ton of counters. I'm okay throwing Charming Prince under the bus since we have a backup to maybe combo with Kogla at some point. Just want to preserve our blue devotion if possible. And there's a Blizzard Brawl, killing Charming Prince. Alright, so probably have to jump with Cobra here. We're down to five. Bookworm can't be cast just yet. We found a Kogla, so that's pretty big. I think Kogla's gonna be better than Bookworm. Opponent does get a Lieutenant trigger. No attacks. And then we'll flicker probably Jiruda over Kogla. And sadly Jiruda missed completely. Doesn't happen very often, but there we go. Not our mentor. And resplendent marshal. And it's counters to the Conclave Mentor. Opponent passes, and another Jiruda to draw. I could use Charming Prince to potentially flicker Kogla as well to take out an extra creature so we can take out Marshall and Mentor. If we flicker with Thassa afterwards. What's Jiruda hoping to hit? Something like a Bookworm or a Dream Trawler would be nice. I think using Thassa's ability and playing Charming Prince is probably safest. And then Charming Prince can flicker uh, Kogla here. Although if we flicker Kogla, I guess we won't be able to flicker it with Thassa. So maybe flicker Jiruda anyway. And then we'll pass. Thassa flickers Kogla. Shiru dies back. Questing Beast isn't bad. Or we could go for another Charming Prince. Charming Prince can exile Kogla, and then Kogla can fight using Indestructible if we don't tap down with Thassa. Yeah, I guess we'll go with another Charming Prince. And then if I exile Jiruda, I wouldn't be able to rely on Thassa as a blocker, so we'll exile Kogla instead. And then I can block with Thassa and use the tap ability. Symbiosis, gonna try and find a creature. So the board is getting stalled and the opponent doesn't really have a great way to attack past our indestructible Thassa. 
and eventually we'll find a flyer to close out the game for us. Second lieutenant, maybe they can go wide if enough creatures with plus one counters die. Kogla is coming back, so we're either fighting Mentor or Lieutenant here. Killing Lieutenant might be safer in a way. So now I don't necessarily need to make Kogla indestructible, so I'm fine tapping with Thassa. Opponent sends everyone, so I can eat Conclave Mentor, chump Lieutenants. And eat a 2 2. Seems fine. Alright, so we have 32 cards remaining, so not too afraid of getting decked just yet. Opponent is at 31, so we're not cracking back for lethal. But I can play a backup Jiruda just to get some more triggers. Finds Charming Prince. How about we flicker Kogla again? Then no great attacks. Thassa flickers Jiruda. And there's a Dream Trawler at long last. Alright. I wouldn't mind a bit more mana so we can leverage Thassa's ability better. And maybe keep up the Indestructible on Kogla. So we can do some Charming Prince shenanigans, but we're looking good. Another Turn Timber Symbiosis finds Oran Reef Ooze. We'll see if they still want to attack. They don't. And then now it's probably safest to keep up Thassa's ability to tap down some creatures. So this can attack. Can flicker Kogla to kill Oren Reef Ooze. And then by tapping down some creatures, we're also setting up a better attack next turn. Shambler doesn't trigger off abilities, only spells, so we're good with Thassa. And a Luminarch Aspirin, sure. Just have to keep our library size in mind so we don't accidentally end up decking. Alright, so who gets to attack? I guess we'll send in several creatures here. Can always make my Coggle indestructible. That's a fine trade. Still have plenty of devotion thanks to Dream Trawler now. Opponent's at 9. And again, probably safest to just activate Thassa a bunch. Emiria's call to make some angels. All right, that's not bad. Serpon getting a lot of mileage out of those dual faced lands. Take four. Their creatures are indestructible. So 
So let's see, if we were to tap down two creatures, our opponent's got three blockers. Block, block, block. Still takes Xaxes. Yeah, that looks good. Alright, so a very grindy game here against a plus one counter deck, but eventually, thanks to Thassa mostly, we managed to stabilize and take over the game. Alright, so we got to see our Giruda deck in action, and yeah, the Strict Saving additions definitely made a big impact on the archetype, so it's worth revisiting. As always, the Giruda deck relies pretty heavily on its opening hand, so it's important to mulligan so you can keep a hand that has the ramp needed to get a Giruda in play early, otherwise you're usually going to be too slow. But uh, yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.